On today's show, I'm going to be doing a remake of Belizean meat pies. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. So we started with approximately one pound of ground beef. And I have it in just a five quart or a six quart skillet. And what I'm going to do with the potato masher is just start mashing it. When it comes to meat pies, you don't want the ground beef to clump up like if you're doing spaghetti. So you want to do this effort right away. And I'm going to keep doing this until the meat is more uh, brown than pink. So you know how Belize women wear those bracelets that are all the way up their arm? When you're doing this, you kind of want to take those off because it's going to get hot. This is my little medic alert bracelet and it doesn't get too hot so I'm leaving it on. But see this? You're going to be over this constant heat. Keep on doing this. And to get the ones that are clumping up in the potato masher, just get a little butter knife and clean it out. And I'm going to keep squishing away until this ground beef becomes very, very fine. You don't want it coarse or clumped up together. So I've been at this for about two or three minutes, just squishing away to make sure it stays loose. And look, it's more brown than pink. There's a little bit of pink going on here still, but it's more brown than pink. And that's all I'm doing right here is browning the ground beef. I'm not gonna put any ricotta or ricotta powder or anything in this. So I just keep doing that and I keep squishing away to make sure the meat stays loose. So I've got some diced onions some chopped washed cilantro, and some yellow peppers. And you know I like these yellow chili peppers. You can use habanero, you can use jalapeno. Use the peppers you like. This is the one I like because it's not too hot and it's flavorful. And that's all I've added to the meat. I haven't added any salt or pepper yet. And again, I come with my potato masher and I'm gonna keep working these ingredients in along with the loose ground beef. And we're gonna do this for another three to five minutes and then we're gonna add some water. So now we have what I call that angry pot sound and I'm gonna add a little bit of water. This is two cups so far, but I'm just gonna add a little bit to quiet the pot. We're not making soup, so we always wanna add the water a little bit at a time. And for the next few minutes at least, we wanna keep working this potato masher to make sure that the meat is fine, okay? And we're gonna add water al along the way as we need it and then I'll tell you how much we end up adding by the time the meat is done. So it's been about an hour and I ended up using two cups of water like this. Each time the pot would get angry like this, I would add a little bit and let it fry. And then I would just take the masher and kind of go through it again. So I'm gonna add a little bit just to tone it down while I do another, the final process of doing the meat. So I quieted it down and I've measured three cups of all-purpose flour and I'm gonna add a little bit of water to the all-purpose flour to make a flour paste. And I suppose you could do this with cornstarch too, but I've always done it with what I have, which is flour, because cornstarch is not an ingredient that I keep too much here in my pantry. So this is too thick. We kinda want it a little bit thinner. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this to make a thinner paste that could pour through a strainer very easily. And then we're gonna pour it in this meat. I haven't added any salt or pepper yet, I tend to add salt and pepper at the end of whatever I'm cooking because you want to make sure that the fluid that you have in it is enough. I keep moving the bowl because it's kind of hot over the pot. Okay, so here we go. And all I'm going to do is pour it through a strainer to get out all the lumps. And that should be enough. So I pour the paste through the strainer. And all I'm going to do, you can use a pot spoon at this point too, but I'm already using this utensil, so why dirty something else? Kind of stir it, add a little bit more water. You don't want it to clump up. And at this point, we're gonna add some salt, a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. And we're gonna taste it too, to make sure that we didn't put too little or too much. So just a little bit. We always wanna start with a little bit of the seasonings first. That way we don't um, put too much. So I'm gonna get a little spoon and I'm gonna taste this. And if I need to add a little bit more salt or a little bit more pepper, I'll let you know. But basically this is how the meat 
is going to look for the meat pie. You want it, you want a good consistency of meat matching a good consistency of the gravy paste type fluid and um, so that we could have the perfect combination to put in the meat pie. I don't know if you guys have noticed some meat pies that Belizean people make and it's just a lot of gel and basically what they do is they don't give you the meat or they grind it in the blender and then you just get that and sometimes I tease and I say I want two of those meat pies with a straw so ours is going to be different so I've allowed the meat to cook for another 15 minutes and then I shut the fire off and now we're going to move to the pie dough so this is how we're going to create our basic pie dough for any type of meat or salty type pies, not the sweet one, okay? So here we are, we're going to start with our flour. So we start by measuring four cups of all-purpose flour. And I use all-purpose flour for everything. I know that there's different types of flour and I even put what they are in my book. But I use all-purpose flour for everything. So that's three. And then here we have four. And then let me teach you how to measure the shortening and the butter because some people are having because some people are having some issues with that all right so let's get to the shortening and the butter. Now get our shortening and let me show you I use only Crisco in any other things I try to use whatever brand is on sale but when it comes to the pie dough I prefer Crisco I really think it does a better job than some of the other stuff that's on the market so we're gonna put it in the cup I want to show you how to measure this because I don't want you to stuff it in there and then you get too much shortening and then your pie dough becomes brittle. So we want to put it in there like that and we're going to get a butter knife and make sure it's there and then we're going to scrape off the excess off the top. And then we're going to put the rest in the quarter of a cup because we're going to do three quarters a cup. So let me get this in there and then we're going to move to the butter. And you can replace um, the the butter with all shortening but you cannot replace the shortening with all butter the reason why I split it half and half for butter and shortening is because the butter makes the pie dough look a little bit more brown or goldeny than adding just the shortening so see this butter is soft and a lot of people when they're making pie dough they'll use the butter cold from the refrigerator especially the professional chefs I've seen them do that and they'll cut it into little pieces or they'll use that tool that you have to make pie dough with that cutting motion thing I don't do any of that I make sure it's soft so I can get the appropriate amount into this measuring cup and um, I have a, a little unique thing too that if you want to do it cold you don't have to dice the butter you can grate it on a cheese grater but we don't do that for this one we want to get this very accurate so what we're going to do here is put the butter in and it's three quarter cups of shortening three quarter cups of butter so you can't go wrong it's half and half we're going to get all the butter in there and then we're going to start adding ice cold water to this we're going to start with four ounces and see if that's enough so i have it sitting here in my little measuring cup and maybe if i use a spatula i could get more of the ingredients out of here so let's begin first of all we're going to begin by working our fat or our butter and shortening into this flour so this is the first step and if you have that pie dough cutting tool you'd be using that here I don't have any of that and people say you can't touch the flour for pie dough you can you totally can pie dough to me is a mathematical thing you have to have the correct proportion of the shortening and butter to match the flour that you're using and that's what makes the pie dough comes out flaky has nothing to do with overworking the dough or anything like that you can however overcook the dough and we'll get to that when we get to the cooking stage so we want to add a little bit more so this is our pie dough and I'm gonna go add a little bit more of the water that we're using because we want four ounces just a little bit too stiff for me not to add more water so I think all we're gonna need is this four ounces of water and then we're gonna get the pie dough and put it on the counter not to knead it but to just make it form into a dough and then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for 15 minutes 
So I'm not kneading the dough. I took it from the bowl because I just wanted to clump up together. And then I'm going to put it back in the bowl and put it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. All right, so I just set it in there for about 15 minutes. Then we're going to come back and roll out. We're going to come back and roll out the pie dough. So this is how I grease the little cupcake pans. I just get a piece of paper towel from the kitchen. You could do it with your bare hands too. And I just go through every one of the little um, cupcake sections and I lavishly grease it with butter. And we're going to get two pans like this. So we're going to get a total of 24 meat pies from this amount that we're making. And so to flour it, this is my little special unique way. I put a little teaspoon or half a teaspoon of all-purpose flour into every section. And we're going to do it with the two pans, but I'm just showing you for this one. And then we are going to do it like this. Just going to tap it, hold it. There is no mistake you can make can make because you're right here on the counter and so it's all floured and then you dump it out and this pan's ready and then you want to do your other pan the same way and you can reuse some of this flour but I like to leave it on the counter because we're going to roll out the pie dough in a few minutes and get it into the pans. So after 15 minutes I took the pie dough from the fridge and I pinched a little piece off and I rolled it as thin as I can go without making holes in it. And what we're going to do is take our little pans and we're going to, I start with the middle. You can start with any one that you want, but I always start with the middle. We kind of just set it in there and I just kind of separate it with my fingers. You can use a knife too, but you don't really need all of that. And so the first one is in the pan and you want to set it in there good and, you know, pretty it up. You want it to look ugly and you want to burp it so all the air is out of it. And if you have more from this dough that you can do, you want to go ahead and put another one. And you're going to pinch it off the same way. Pinch off this excess dough right here. And pretty much you're not going to have it um, set enough to do another piece without rolling it out again. So that's why I tell you, you can't overwork the dough because I'm going to have to roll that piece out again to get the rest of this filled and to get the rest of this pan filled. So let me go ahead and get that done now that I've showed you how to do a couple. And then we're going to come back and fill it with the meat. So here we are finally filling the pie pans, trying to get them as neat as we can. Presentation is everything, huh? Putting in the last one. And that took me a total of about 20 minutes. If you're new to this, it might take you longer. Don't get frustrated. Just um, take your time and fill the cupcake pans one at a time. Now, do you see why I say I don't know how people can do this for a living? Try to get all the air, try to burp all the air out of the, the little pans. And this piece that's left over is going to be our lids, okay? But let's set that aside for a quick minute because I want to show you how to fill the little cups with the meat. See, look at my meat. It's not too dry. It's not too wet. And so when I put this in here, it's going to be perfect proportion to where you're going to get the right amount of meat in every um, cup. So I've got a little spoon, like a soup spoon. So you want to do it neatly. And you just do it like that, one at a time. See, i got a little bit of mess there. We're going to clean that up with a rag or a tissue before we get the pie in the oven because that's going to burn and smell. And so basically this is what we want to do fill each and every one of these little cups with the meat and then when I come back I'm going to show you how to roll out and cut out the lids. Okay look at my little pies and I'm going to clean this up better okay but for right now I just want to show you that I try to get the meat all even in it and if you fill one too much and one got short change just steal it back out of it and put it in. There's no hard and fast rules to this. So now I have a little bit of flour on my counter still and I have this left over for the lids and we're going to make this work because we don't want to make any more than this because this should work. The recipe that we did for the pie dough should work for the uh, 24 pies and the lids. So if we have to re-knead and re-knead this, that's what we're going to do. So what I do is I get this as thin as I can go without poking holes in it. And you can see how it flakes like that. So you know that this pie dough is going to be flaky. It's not going to be one of these soggy ones or one of these hard ones that you can't chew. 
So let me get a section of it very thin so you can see what we're gonna do. I got a regular drinking glass and it has a wide mouth because I don't have a biscuit cutter. And these are things that I just refuse to invest in. And you cut it like that. And what I do, I go to the middle one. I always start in the middle. You set it in and you get a fork, like a little dinner fork that you eat with or a salad fork. And you seal the lid shut like this. And try to make it pretty. Because when it comes to these pies, you kind of want to present them because they're hard work, so you want them to look good. And that's what we're going to do for all the rest of these pies. We're going to cut the lid like this with the glass, pick it up, and put it on there. And we're going to put it with the fork. And then we're going to get it in the oven. Give me a moment so that I can go ahead and get these lids on. Okay, so this is my first tray with 12. And I've put the lids on, and I'm closing the lids sealing it shut with a fork you know and some people will put that egg white wash on the top with a brush I don't like to put it because I swear I can smell it but maybe I'll put it on like the last two when I do the next tray so you can see the difference with how the pie looks when it's done when we put the egg wash and when we don't put it so I'm gonna get the other pan with the lids on and clean this up and we're gonna get it in the oven I'll, I'll show you if I put the egg wash this is my second um, pan of 12. And you can tell I'm getting tired because they're looking less and less pretty, right? But that's okay. It's only for us. We're not selling it to anybody. And I got an egg white. And we're gonna put a little bit of wash on just two of the pies. Because I don't know that anybody in here will eat it with this wash on it because I know I can smell it. Let's put it on this one and put it on this one. Okay, we're gonna know it's the two on, on the end here because we're gonna put it in the oven this way where these are on the back. So let's put it in the oven on 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes and then we'll check on it, all right? So let's get it in the oven. Let's put it in like that so we can know which one. Alrighty, look at our little pies. I wanted to show you, the pies are done baking, but I wanted to show you how much of this I had left. One little piece. It, it would have made another pie probably, or we could have made a patty, but I didn't have enough meat, so I didn't make anything with it, but I'm not gonna throw it out because I can put like some hot dogs and cheese and stuff in this and make some kind of pocket something. We don't waste anything here at the Bear Pantry Show. So take a look right here and look at our finished product. We have 24 of the pies. This is just some of the gravy mess that I cleaned it up, but it kind of spilled still out of the lids, but that's okay. It's very hot right now, so we don't want to mess with it while it's still hot. These are the two that I put the egg wash on. I hope the camera can do it some justice to see the difference in the color, see? And that's why you put that on for beautification, but I don't like the smell. I, some people say you can't smell it. I swear I can smell it. So what I'm going to do is let it cool down, and then I'm going to show you how we get it out of the pans. And um, we want to kind of eat these right away when they're hot. So I have a little butter knife and I'm going around. That's why we greased and buttered the pan and we're just taking them out one at a time. Let me get one from here and just kind of work the knife all the way around and pop it out. That's why we grease and butter the pans, okay? So this is how we get the pies out. They're still warm. They smell so good. All right, I'm going to get the rest of them out. See how awesome these meat pies came out? If you can't eat them right away when they're hot and you have to eat them later when they're cold, put them in the toaster oven or in the oven to heat them up, right? Not the microwave because it'll make the dough come soft and soggy. I hope you enjoy these pies. They're kind of spicy. You can delete the pepper if you want, so it's not as spicy. And um, I want you to give me a message to tell me how it comes out. As you can see, you can't overwork the dough if you put the right proportions of the shortening, the butter and the flour, but you can overcook the pies. And so that's what you have to be careful of. It's 45 minutes on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you for watching. I love you for subscribing. Thank you for picking up the book. And until I see you again, take care.